We could survive that. We could survive that. We could survive it. Hello and welcome to We Could Survive That, your survivor guide to the movies. I'm Jack. Today I'm joined by a man who's of questioning sanity. It's Chris. Or Max. Or whoever he is. Mad Max. Okay, forget the Mad Max part. Just Max is not questioning his sanity. He's having a really bad time. Right, he's he's got his his job, which he eventually he he quits from. Then he's trying to like spend time with his family, and then they're mowed down by the motorcycles. And his wife goes to the hospital, and she dies, and the kid dies right away. And then, then his buddy gets killed and set on fire. Actually, I think he survives it though. But he's burnt up, and and there's car crashes, and he's having a very stressful time in a dystopian Australian landscape. And you're calling him mad? It's just mean. It is a bit mean. I mean, how would you deal with that situation? Would you? maintain your sanity or would you succumb to it well i'd fall to my knees and go no and i'd go wait i don't have a wife and kid whose wife and kid is that (laughs) and then go i don't need to break my sanity because it's not my wife or child that's died also i'm not a member of this australian uh police force the mfp the main police force chris they're the main police force main police actually the main force patrol i think you'll find they're called (laughs) oh (laughs) oh don't get technical with me Okay, oh, well, I'm sorry, I'm just... It's the some MFP I'm going to have, you know? That's some sneaky post-apocalyptic lawyer shit that also happens in this film. Because isn't it that the police are actually... They're not the police anymore, they've been dissolved, have they? And there's there's just this MFP, which is for the, 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 the motorway stuff. But Look, are they police, or are they just law enforcers, but they're not quite police? I have no idea what's going on in this film, if I'm quite honest. Uh, We're doing Mad Max, but the original recipe Mad Max from 1979, starring Chris, Mel Mm -hmm. Gibson, Stephen Bisley, Joanna Samuel, and the late Hugh Keysburn, who passed away uh, uh, last year, who who was also uh, Immortan Joe in uh, the the latest Mad Max film, Fury Road. So, yeah, this is the first in the series of Mad Max films, directed by George Miller, costing a tiny uh, $300,000. That's Australian, so if you want that in British pounds, I think just half it, and that'll see you more or less right. But uh, the world situation in Mad Max, the first one, Chris, uh, I think there was a war, and the apocalypse is just starting to happen, but hasn't quite happened yet, which is why there's still a police force. And lawyers, slimy post-apocalyptic lawyers. It's not exactly slimy post-apocalyptic lawyers, is it? The victims and whatnot didn't turn up to the court, so it was just thrown out. It's not slimy, it's smart. Well, the police turned up. Surely their testimony counts for something. They're not the police. They're the MFP, damn it. (laughs) And who cares? The world's about to go into an apocalypse. Because sometime between this film... And the second film, everything goes even more to shit, and then we get fucking the Thunder Road comes along. So Thunderdome. Thunder no, wait, no. Thunderdome's the third film, isn't it? Yeah, you smash together Fury Road and Thunderdome. Oh my god, amazing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh uh, oh uh, uh, Road Warrior. Road Warrior is the second film. So is it Road Warrior? Uh it, it might be. Wait, I've oh, got the right. DVD case here, Chris. Oh, okay. That's, Why don't you grab that then? That's a do you hear that? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, Road Warrior too. So sometime between this film and the second film, it goes even worse of the apocalypse stuff. So nobody cares about the slime ball, slime ball lawyer or anything like that. So it's all fine. Everything in this film is fine because, as you say, the apocalypse is just starting and everyone's losing their fucking minds. So it's all right. Almost everyone. The main police force lot, they seem to be trying to hold everything together, like Mad and Goose and Fifi. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. Just uh, watering plants, topless with a scarf in his office, and going, hey, Max, you can't quit. You take a break, you take a holiday, you go to a farm, then you come back right here, Max. Exactly. That guy's guy's weird. And this is why Mad Max questions why who's more crazy, him or himself. Granted, he doesn't do that until Fury Road. Him or himself. Did I just say that? Oh, my God, I'm (laughs) I'm losing it. (laughs) Is this Australia? <laughs> uh, yeah, I get what you mean. It's mad. Okay. Is Max mad or is the world around him mad? Or is it both, you know, a bit of, bit of this, little of that? They're both crazy. 
everything's just as mad as everything else kind of makes you want to see the rest of the world we only even see australia in this and that's gone to shit is there a mad max situation going on in england do you reckon no i think it's just australia and the rest of the world's continuing on as normal no i think the reason why it's bad at the moment in the first film is because there was recently a world war and then i can't remember if, if it was in two or three but they start dropping nuclear bombs so everywhere else gets nuked so i'm i think maybe australia because it's they tend to stay out of the way i think they may have just gotten away with being totally obliterated oh okay and that's what leads to this uh, this new world Although we're getting way too far ahead because we're still in the yeah. whole Mad Max at the moment. Let's come back to uh, to the first film. So, yeah, this film had the world record for most profitable independent film uh, for quite a while, Chris, up until 1999. Any guesses as to what film overtook it? What, in 1999 that was an independent movie? Was it one of the other Mad Max films? It it wasn't, no. It was the Blair Witch Project. Really? Okay. Yeah. That surprises me, fair enough. Well, it, it was a big hit. Like, it was like one of the first movies to use a sort of viral marketing campaign, and it costs probably even less than Mad Max did, because there aren't really any stunts or anything. It's just people wandering around a forest and getting lost, and then a man hides in a corner. That's oh, that's, that that's Blair Witch, right? Yeah, that is Blair Witch. That man in the corner is fucking freaky, though. Yeah. No, look, I like this film because it's kind of a blueprint of what is to come uh, when George Miller eventually gets bigger, a bigger budget. So there's sort of the car crashes and chases. They're minimal in this because of the budget and health and safety because, uh, well, quite frankly, there wasn't any health and safety. They weren't actually allowed to film on most of the roads that they actually filmed on so so they were doing it kind of cloak and dagger uh they didn't have any stunt drivers the police came along they would try to shut them down and and shoot them off (laughs) okay and you said they had no stunt drivers either no it was all the bikers um yeah health and safety chris if you think it was bad in the 80s this is the 70s so it's it's barely the 70s. It's, it's 79. <laughs> yeah, it's still the 70s, though. So, yeah. What else? Yeah, tiny budget. But there, you can see the things that he wanted to do if he got a bigger budget. Like, there's a scene where they these bikers pole vault onto a tanker truck and just siphon off some petrol from it. But that would obviously evolve into the much bigger and grandiose spectacles that we see in the other films. So, yeah, you can see where it goes, and it's a good start. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And uh, it does spawn into quite a successful franchise, I might add. There's what, there's a Mad Max spin-off film current coming out, and I think there's meant to be a, a sequel to Fury Road that's coming out as well. Yeah, I, I look forward to either one of those, because uh, George Miller, he's not bad. He's a good director, Chris, even with a tiny budget. Exactly. I'm assuming, assuming he's going to be doing these new ones as well. That's what I'm hoping. Because there are some directors who, when they get given a tiny budget, they make really good movies, but they get given a big budget and they make terrible movies. So hopefully, you know, George Miller, he, oh, he's already proven it. He knows how to make films with bigger budgets. Yeah. Yeah. Fury Road, Happy Feet, Happy Feet. Pig in the City. <laughs> <laughs> he's done stuff, Chris. He's done stuff. Now, survival stuff. Uh, how are you with biker gangs? I'm going to be honest with you here. I have not had any encounters with uh, biker gangs per se. Um, I've had limited experience riding a motorcycle, and I once saw a guy on a motorbike being chased by a Land Rover in the pouring rain on a motorway. Um, not on TV. This is this this happened. I was driving along along the Whoa. motorway, and this motorbike was being chased by this Land Rover. And a sneaky motorbike, he um he turned off, he went to the hard shoulder and turned off his headlight, applied his brakes. Well, actually, he didn't apply his brakes. There's nothing lit up at the back, so he turned off his headlight, went to the hard shoulder, and the Land Rover drove past him. And then he um left his headlights off and stayed on the hard shoulder. Shoulder. Then I saw him pull off into like a little lay-by pit stop thing. Yeah, true what story. What was going on? What was going on there? I don't know. I don't know the full story. I was, to be honest, 
I, I was trying to watch that and concentrate on the road at the same time because it was absolutely chucking <laughs> it down with rain and it was like pitch black. I couldn't see anything. It was really dangerous. And I just saw this motorbike and it's like, cause I thought it's Land Rover. It's really close to this motorbike. And then he, um, yeah, pulled that stunt with no headlights like they do in the movies and, and hid from this Land Rover oh. in the shadows of the hard shoulder. So that's my experience with motorbikes. <laughs> That's, that's, that sounds like a real Thunder Road, Chris, there. That was, that was a real Thunder Road moment, and I was just sitting there going, ooh. God bless it. Well, that was, that was almost toe cutter esque Chris. <laughs> but there you go. I'm glad I could bring something exciting to this. Well, look, toe cutter is this mad leader of a biker gang. He's got one eyebrow. Uh, he's a bit flamboyant, shall we say, eccentric. He hisses a lot. Well, he's very... going to make it... An scary character so you want them to have a, this uh, scary gimmick and perhaps the hissing was not the best choice <laughs> scary borderline camp i'd say but he's, <laughs> he's he's got some intimidating moments when uh him and his gang go to pick up the late night rider not the uh uh oh not hugh hefner uh <laughs> I know who you're trying to think of. Come on, you what's, can do it. <laughs> what's his name? If you know his name, tell me. The half. Uh, the half, yes. <laughs> what did I think you have now? <laughs> David Hasselhoff, that's his name. Jesus. Yeah. Where, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my <sorry>. God. <laughs> I've ruined a perfectly good joke by not remembering Hugh Hef... No, David Hasselhoff's name. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> All of this is to be left in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't edit it out, because you'll, you'll bring it up, I'm sure. But no, Knight Riders is killed. and They go to retrieve his body uh, that's been dropped off via train. And he, like, touches the face really awkwardly of this old guy. And he's like, ah... Uh, Look up into the sky and you'll see the night rider. And it's like, yeah, I'll I'll do that. Just stop touching my face. It's a bit <laughs> creepy. Well, you want this sense of uh, creepiness and uh, madness. And, you know, that's the whole point of the entire film. Everyone's losing their shit to, you know, bring out this uh, character, this threat. Because if you've got Mad Max, you need someone who's just as mad to do battle with him. Otherwise, it's not an evil playing field. I mean, Max isn't that mad i mean he spends most of the film just being a reasonable police officer slash family man i mean in like the opening chase scene he's the only competent one that doesn't crash i mean he joins the chase of the night rider about halfway through and then basically just follows the night rider until he crashes into a turned over lorry and his car explodes Okay, so he joined halfway through, so he didn't have much time to make as mistakes as the others. And also, like I told you before the show, um, he's got abilities listed on his Wikipedia page. <laughs> the abilities say driving, driving, what, what? Uh, driving one handed while firing a weapon, driving all sorts of vehicles, um, the ability to ram other people and to get into car crashes and, you know, be OK. To get into car crashes. Well, That's you know, ability. Yes, I have well, that ability. <laughs> I demonstrate that ability a few times. I've always come off okay. And so is everybody else. I, you know, very minor crashes. Not Mad Max style, of course. They crash into you, Chris. They don't they like do the cut of your chip. So they go, I'll have that guy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What other abilities does he have? Or skills? Come on, what are his top Trump stats? I don't I don't have that information to hand out. Oh, okay. Boring. Oh, well. Knight Rider's death. I mean, uh... I mean, there are there are two deaths. It's Knight Rider's death and um, Toe Cutter's death, where they're just being chased by Max, and then, uh, independent of Max, Max's involvement, they crash into something and get themselves killed. So, in other words, you just need to concentrate more and pay attention to what's actually going on on the road and your surrounding areas. Basic one driving one hundred and one things that they should have learnt. Um, yeah. Okay, these, uh, these these guys, they're adults, okay? So let's assume that when they learnt to drive, it was before there had been a war, so Australia was just a uh, you know normal functioning country as it is at the moment. So they would have learnt how to drive properly at that point. They would have learnt, you look left, you look right, you use your indicators, your brakes, etc., etc. So there yeah. really is no excuse for their piss-poor driving. The world's ending and you think you can drive like a dick? No, sir, that yeah. is not how this works. 
Yeah, well, even some of the coppers drive like um, lunatics because one of them crashes into a van and starts going, oh no, he had his indicator on, I'm in trouble. We don't actually <laughs> see if the guy in that van died because that van went flying. Are you talking about the sort of, is it the blue, small blue van? Yes. Yeah, that the person definitely died. Because it, it flipped and spun so far. I mean, that's because they took the engine out when they crashed it. So there wouldn't be oil and stuff on the road. But still, it went super oh far. God. Yeah, that person definitely died then. And there's like there's a good chance they were not wearing their seatbelt. And let's face it, um, they could have been drinking, they could have been on drugs or... Or any of that other stuff. So there's there's a good chance he would have died, especially if it's in that post-apocalyptic time. You know, people were probably high all the time while driving to make it more enjoyable. Witness me. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> Witness me safely take this corner whilst indicating. <laughs> that guy definitely died. <laughs> he did not survive his oh. van being flipped and rolled and spun around like that. Well, look, Goose and Max, they sort of go after Toe Cutter's gang. They managed to get one of the the bikers, uh, a guy called Johnny the Boy, who decided to, after one of the gang's many crimes, uh, decided to stay behind and get stoned. The cops find him. They imp- Well, they tried to imprison him, but Slimy Lawyer is slimy and gets him off. Goose loses his shit a little bit. And... Um, the bikers decide to go after the cops. After a night of boozing, Chris Goose uh, goes back onto his bike, uh, which has been sabotaged by Johnny the Boy. The The bike loses control and crashes, but Goose is fine, so he survives that one trap. It's a trap! Uh, and then he falls into another trap, which is a little bit less sophisticated, which is just Toe Cutter's gang throws a rock through a windshield. And he crashes. Well, I mean, that would make you crash, wouldn't it? If you, you're driving along and, and a rock or something comes through your windshield and smashes it. Um, it'd be a miracle for you not to crash. And he's already used up his miracle by surviving the bike crash. So, you know, what comes around goes around. There's life well, and death. I mean, he doesn't actually die in this other crash, though, does he? No, well, he crashes and then Toe Cutter and Johnny the Boy set him on fire. He's recovered by some medics, but he's horribly burnt. Uh, on life support, probably. Max goes and sees him, freaks out, comes out of the um, hospital room, and it's like, no, that's not the goose. That's not the goose, because he's freaking out. But it is the I goose, could... Chris. It's, it's you know, <laughs> Kentucky Fried Goose is what it is. Uh, I was, you stole my joke. I've got it written oh. down twice. It's that good. His goose is cooked, Chris. That's... Oh, his goose is cooked. Oh, I like that. Yes, yeah. okay. <laughs> also, also, does he get to... Admiral Akbar's It's a Traps, because he got trapped twice, essentially. It's a trap! Well, I mean, he didn't learn from the first trap, did he? I mean, also it's the did... same trap, but the first one didn't really work, so they just improvised the second one. Well, see, yeah, the, the first one was too sophisticated for the bike gang, trying to sabotage another vehicle and a guy survives. When they go crude in that lot, it works perfectly well. But did they need to sabotage his bike the first time round? He'd been out drinking. He was probably going to crash the bike regardless. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Why didn't they just stick a bomb on the bike? I oh, know, post-apocalypse, they probably didn't. Post-apocalypse, they would have had makeshift nail bombs or something like that, wouldn't they? Yeah, but not a biker gang. I think no. these guys are just scavenging off of the bare minimums because they, they have to scavenge for fuel as well. So I don't think they'd waste okay. it in like a petrol bomb or something like that. But you know what? They still fluff it the second time. They're like, we've, we've made this guy come his bike. He survived it. We've made him crash. We've set him on fire. And Goose is still alive in hospital. Yeah, Although, well, I, the the thing was they... I don't know whether... George Miller planned a sequel for this, but there was an idea early in the development of the second Mad Max film that Goose was going to be Lord Humongous, the bad guy in that, because he's got burn marks, but they scrapped it. uh, Because although the first one had done well, uh, still a number of people hadn't seen it, so it wouldn't have made, it wouldn't have had an impact on it. Also, Lord Humongous is a lot bigger than Goose, so... Is that why he's called Lord Humongous? 
because he's, he's pretty big. Yeah, I've seen bigger people, but he's he's pretty big. Also, it doesn't mean Goose couldn't get that big. He, he comes out there, he's like, I survived all these horrible things, and my body's been burned on, burned on the outside, but inside it's now become this temple, and that's why he becomes really big and strong. And they, and they like, stretched him out so he was, like, seven feet tall. It was reconstructive surgery to help him go over his burns. I... The, I, I don't know. I don't know how. I mean, that's not going to work, obviously, but no, who cares? I... It's Mad Max. It is. No, I'm glad they didn't go with that idea, but it. what do you reckon happened to Goose? I think he died shortly after, because, uh, uh, and also Jesse, Max's wife, I reckon she died after as well, because, again, the hospital situation's probably not great. Medical surprise, supplies would probably be short at best. Even if they didn't die, they're, they're both laying in a hospital. You know, uh, um, the wife, she can't move because she's in a coma. Uh, Goose can't move because of his injuries. And then, like you said, these possible nuclear bombs that get dropped to wipe out all the water and everything else. I mean, the hospitals would probably have been hit as well, wouldn't they? You're going you're gonna to take out your enemy's hospital, so they were probably killed in the explosions. Well, n- not even getting taken out directly by one of the bombs, just the bomb hits and then all civilization is wiped out. It just takes another gang or people to run out of water to ration it and go, OK, who's more useful to this society, a nurse or a dying, burnt former main force police officer? Exactly. So let's face that it, kind they're of, both dead. Yeah, that kind of cutthroat attitude. Also, Max doesn't go back at the end of this film. He just drives off. He just leaves them both in the hospital. Although maybe he went back and they died. But oh, Maybe he just knew they were going to die. Or maybe he drives off into the sunset and then goes back and is like, oh, fuck, they're dead. And then decide, drives back off again. That was the post credit scene that nobody ever sees. He went, oh, no, it's too late. I was oh, off seeking revenge on Toe Cutter when I should have been here with my friend and Jesse. So, yeah, not good, Deep Max, not good. Do you know what might have actually happened is uh, the, uh, the wife, Jessie, she dies. But uh, they're, they're trying to kill off um, Goose and they just can't. Uh, they all plug his life support and he keeps going. They try and do leave him alone in that lot. They, they try and like inject him with a poison. He survives that. Goose cannot die. Goose Maybe. is still alive and rocking in all these other films. That's what these spin-off films are going to be. It's going to be Mad Max Goose. Well, but maybe Goose is a Morton Joe then if he's unkillable. Except he's not, though. He's Toe Cutter Reborn, isn't he? Yeah, I was going to say, they're played by the same actor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether there is a fan theory, whether anyone's made it so that Toe Cutter could be Immortan Joe, because the story of, I, I got hit by a truck, and then I took over this weird mountain with giant water taps on it. I think they're two different characters to be the same guy. I can't see Toe Cutter going, ooh, <laughs> and being... Flouncy turning into Immortan Joe, who's a bit more uh, tactical. Well, um, you, you don't know. He's, he's he's hit full on by a truck off of his, off of his bike. He's horribly disfigured, hence he's uh and you know needs help. He's breathing mask. That's why he's got his Immortan Joe. And like he's sitting there stewing, thinking, if I had been more tact- tactical, I could have beaten Max and all that lot and blah, blah, blah. And then he 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 starts playing chess, and then he grows into Immortan Joe. Whereas, He's... like, I want all these wives. <laughs> Toe Cutter is properly... I mean, the mannequin of Toe Cutter is properly hurled under that bus. It, yeah, okay, yeah. Not bus, it's truck, a, a lorry. <laughs> yeah. It's properly squashed. Also, his eyes bulge out of his head, so... That is funny. <laughs> it is good. He's properly dead. Dead. But uh, it would tie in. There's also that theory, isn't there, that um, Tom Hardy's not Mad Max, not the original Max, that he's maybe the kid from the second Mad Max movie. Potentially, maybe he just stole Mad Max's car. Do I mean, well, yeah, because the the car they make this car into the big thing in you know, the first film and the other films, and then he loses it immediately in Fury Road and just doesn't have it at all. Well, it's not even in the third Mad Max film because it's destroyed in the second one. Oh, I forgot about that. So how the hell is it? Okay, we're getting a. Okay, so we're sparring off into Fury Road again. <laughs> well, yeah, the films are, if you think about them, a continuity nightmare. 
but they are well made romps that I can forgive that. Also, you want you want to see the interceptor car, and it does show up in Fury Road. I mean, Max isn't driving it, but well, he drives it for a little bit, then he crashes it, and then one of the war boys takes it, and he's like, "Give me that fucking car back, you prick!" And then he <laughs> blows it up. So he blows up the last of the V8s, Chris. Oh dear. There's Prime. definitely going to be another one in the in the other films. It's fine. It's fine. They're going to be in the other films. Because the, the, the in-universe theory for why the continuity is all messed up is because these are meant to be individual stories of this legendary man called Max that people are telling to other people. So you never know if they're real or not. That's why the car keeps coming back. Yeah, that's fine. I like that idea. Like of a lone wanderer, like a Clint Eastwood type that just rocks into somebody else's story, takes the plot and goes, I'll be having that, thanks. Shoots everyone and then hands the plot back and wanders off into... I don't know, a rom-com or a <laughs> something else. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, I like it. Uh, Toe Cutter's death. Do you want to talk about him? Uh, or is it more drive safely, Toe Cutter? Or no, the, Max, he takes out a bunch of um, uh, Toe Cutter's biker gang. He lures them into a trap where he overtakes them and then charges at them on a bridge and then they either crash into him or they fly off into the river below. That is the problem when you have a car versus motorbike situation. The car is always going to come off on top. That that was drilled in heavily to us when when, when we was learning how to ride the motorbike. The other vehicles will always come off on top. If you get into an altercation with another driver and there's a little bit of road rage, you always have to back off because you're you're not in a vehicle that's going to win <laughs> win in a collision at all. Unless um, it's a guy on roller skates. Okay, unless it's a guy in roller. Actually, no, I still think that'll do you some damage because you're still going to come off the bike. Whatever you hit, it's going to be a miracle if you stay on there. And also, look, the problem with this is that they were riding their bikes, and uh, I think Max is using the um, was it the supercharged V8 that he's taken from the the, the MFP yeah, like garage, isn't it? It's, it's the interceptor. So it, it's it's faster than the bikes, which is why you can overtake him. Why not just when he overtook the bikes, did the bikers not just stop, turn around, and drive back the other way? Why do they continue driving forward? Well, they're mad. They want the the fight, don't they? Oh, okay, so they're like, oh, fuck this, we're going to go at him. Well, then yeah. they're fucking idiots. If you drive <laughs> on a bike and you're driving full onto a car and you're like, yeah, I'm going to take this guy. No, no, that's not clearly not going to work. <laughs> no, and it doesn't. But, you know, I, I did say Toe Cutter didn't have much tactical advantage, but that's been going to be proved wrong immediately because he, he lays a trap for Mad Max. It's a trap! God damn it, Admiral Akbar's getting a lot of outings this episode, isn't he? <laughs> Lots of traps. He lays one for uh, Max. Uh, Max gets out of the car to investigate uh, what he thinks is a biker corpse, but it's not. I think it's Toe Cutter or one of his seconds shoots Max in the knee, then they ride over his arm, crush that, and then Toe Cutter's goon drives up to Max and is going to run him over and finish him off but max gets the sawn off shotgun and shoots kills him toe cutter gets freaked out drives off and drives into the front of a lorry <laughs> so that's that's how it ends so all to toe cutter had to do was keep his cool about it see max is taking out his, his his friend and then he's just got to go over and kill max before max can get off a second shot uh, he's using a sawn off shotgun um, yeah, you know, he's possibly got got two shells in it, but he might have just had the one shell. Maybe when he fired, he had to reload it. That's plenty of time for Toe Cutter to get over there and been like, you know, you, you've met your match, Max or whatever. You know, something witty like that. I know I'm, I'm pretty good at stuff like that. And then just you know, take him out. It would have been fine. Not not well, shit yourself and get on the bike and go. Oh, there's a truck there. I know what to do. Head on. You just saw him shoot your friend, and you want to drive at him and do the same thing. Well, like I said, if the Max might have to have reloaded. No, you, well, you, don't you know, know it's a you know it's a two two shell thing, and you know he only shot one. Oh, okay. Here's what you do: you drive at him, pop a wheelie, so when Max shoots, he can only hit the underneath of the bike. Hope he doesn't hit your fuel line, so it explodes. And as you get closer, you jump off the well, bike, you, which continues wheeling and runs Max over. You'd hit your feet. Well, it doesn't matter if your foot gets shot, does it? You can still ride the bike. Also, if you're wheeling, Max could just sidestep and then with his good hand just push you off the bike. But then why didn't his uh, his wife and son do that when they got mowed down by the motorcycles? They were running and she was carrying a baby. 
Also, when when that, that mighty cycle gang comes, whoever hit them, how did they not come off their bike? We were just talking about how they should have come off the bike. Yeah, true. Maybe they wobbled, but they they kept their feet or kept their wheels. I don't know. That scene is graphic because of its simplicity. It's just you see Jesse go down and then a shoe and a ball roll off as the bikers go past. It's it's brutal because it's it leaves it up to your imagination as to how horrible the incident was. So yeah, not oh oh my lord, he calmed down. <laughs> it's, it's it's very grim, but yeah, toe cutter just gets smashed uh, by the by the lorry, uh, and his eyes pop out. So that's good. Good. How do you not see the huge lorry when he when he got on the bike and he took off? Was he uh, was he just turning around staring back at Max continuously? Because I don't, surely, I mean, I, I I see lorries when I'm riding my bike. I definitely see fucking lorries when they're coming at me. Lorries don't always see me, but I definitely see the lorry. <laughs> well, I think it might be a thing. He was looking behind at Max, and then maybe he's going over a hill, turns back around, and then the lorry's on top of him before he can do anything. This is why you need wing mirrors on bikes. They're, they're not actually, they're not a legal requirement, but you should definitely have them because that way you don't have to keep looking over your shoulder. Yeah, true. To but does it see if the guy with the shotgun's there? Yeah, does it not streamline your bike? Takes away some of the speed, maybe. Well, I mean, probably does, but you know, if it, safety, isn't it? Damn it! If these bikers just had a little bit of safety, they would have survived this film. This film was survivable for a lot of them. Seventies, Chris. It's health and safety again, not invented. Last death, Johnny the Boy, uh, the death that invented the Saw franchise, Mad Max, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cuffs his ankle to a crash car, sets up a little fuel trap that will explode in a couple of minutes, and Johnny the Boy has got to cut through his leg to get away from the explosion. He doesn't, and he explodes and dies. Uh, well, we need- do you blame him for not doing it? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm pretty. I'm, I know for a fact I wouldn't be able to saw through my own leg, even if I knew imminent death was coming. I'd just be like, "Oh, why me? Why?" and just break down. I don't think I'd be able to cut through my own leg, because uh, let's face it, the only way you're going to survive it is if you can cut through your leg, get away from the car to a safe enough distance, stem the bleeding, and then find further medical help, which you probably won't be able to get. Exactly. But say you cut through your leg, you, you'd have to crawl away, let the explosion happen, crawl back to find some hot metal to, um, uh, what's it called, Cart- uh, cauterize your wound, burn that up to stop it bleeding. Then you'd have to drag yourself away, hope Max doesn't come back to make sure you're definitely dead after the explosion. And then you'd have to find a vehicle to then get out of there. And this is post-apocalyptic, wild, everyone's out for themselves land, so there's every chance that the next trucker that goes past is some sort of cannibal. Or there's oh my a, God. <laughs> another rival biker gang or whatever. But you know who would turn up to help him, though? If, if he had a way of contacting him, he could call his uh, slime ball lawyer, as you like to put it. Oh. He's like, yeah. oh, Johnny, again, I need your help. He's the first one to get eaten in that town if they turn to cannibalism. <laughs> what, the lawyer or Johnny? The lawyer. No, maybe Goose, because he's already cooked. Then the lawyer. <laughs> That's exactly. Oh, oh, yeah, we could turn to cannibalism. <laughs> Oh, what's all this delicious smell? Extra crispy, you say? Goose is already cooked. Let's eat him. Oh, God, oh. you had to get it. Okay, yes, yeah, so the goose is cooked, Joey. I told you, I wrote it down twice in my notes. It's that good. <laughs> oh, poor goose, no. He was a good cop. A drunk, a ladies' man, in that diner eating food when he should be getting ready for police action. But isn't but... every 70s police officer a, a notorious drunk slash... Donut eater slash womanizer. Oh yeah, it's part of the job description. Exactly. So seventies police, that's what they're meant to do. So Goose was spot on when he done it all of it. Yeah. It's Max that was doing it wrong because he was a reliable family man. Fa- a reliable family man. Ah oh, damn it. That's no wonder he went mad trying to trying to live a live an insane life in an insane world, whatever the quote is. Yeah, that's that's not bad, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. No you stole. You probably stole it from somewhere, but you remember. Oh no! Yeah, it. I've heard. It, I've heard it in other places. I can't remember where, but you, you know, it's a it's a quote, isn't it? It's, I can't remember the exact words. Yeah. Do you reckon maybe if Max was, you know, watering plants, 
in a scarf, topless. That that would have. Done it would have fitted better, yes. Yeah, with Fifi. With Fifi, yeah, <laughs> fucking Fifi. <laughs> oh, Fifi. When will Fifi learn? Fifi oh. definitely survived the uh, the whatever happened between the first and second film, and it's just there in a the second film, like, oh, we've got this road warrior, this this great legend, you want to hear about it? And she's like, nah, got to water my plans. Yeah, I start. I retired from the force, and I'm fighting a losing battle to keep these house plants alive. What's it? There's a guy that meets with Fifi, who right. wanders up. They have a bit of dialogue, and then he leaves. But he's where he wears like a like one of those fencing masks he just puts one of them on it's weird well that's fine isn't it protection you're living in this world where you've got roaming biker gangs and then and, and all sorts of other crime and stuff so you want something that will protect your face from possible stab attacks true yeah it's not uh, it's not a proper fencing thing it's like a kendo i don't know what you'd call it but it's it's sort of like that yeah i do like the the odd little things that the bikers have to make them stand out and make them look a bit more ramshackled. But no, it's good. It would obviously be developed in the spiky bikers and the mad cars that we get in Fury Road, but it's a good exactly. start, Chris. Yeah, I like it. it. Uh, Typical uh, wasteland aesthetics. Yeah. Anything else to add, or shall we wrap this thing up? Um, watch the movie. But it's, it's, it's a good film. But it's uh, it, it's not it's not the fan favorite. Everyone seems to like the second film more than the others. Yes, because that's really what Miller wanted to make in the first place. It's got bigger stunts, the stories, a little less wandering. There's more action in it. It's more concise, uh, and the world is more realized than it is in this sort of pseudo apocalypse. But it's small town Australia sort of thing. And that's why it works so brilliantly. The third film, obviously you watch that just for Tina Turner. Why wouldn't you? She's fabulous, isn't it? And then <laughs> and then the f- <laughs> and then and then the fourth film is just good. Do you remember we went to the cinema to watch that? And we, we went to that one yeah. viewing and it wasn't on and we had to wait around for a next viewing. Good God. What I did they not know who we were? Precisely. Did we turn them and go, This is for a podcast, damn it. <laughs> this is for episode fifteen, probably. God, oh, many moons ago. Yeah, Yeah, we still don't do that because they go, fuck off. Exactly. (laughs) Buy your tickets like normal people. And we do. Not anymore, though, because everything's closed. Not not at the moment, no. But hopefully, fingers crossed, in time for Mortal Kombat. We're definitely going to be covering that on the show. Yeah, we're excited about that. Bless you. (laughs) I I, I am am very excited about it anyway. Back to the end of the show. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. going to spiral off into a Mortal Kombat uh, episode. Uh, uh, email we could survive that at gmail.com or tweet us at we could survive if you've got any thoughts on Mad Max or you, I don't know, like Mortal Kombat. Uh, but until then, Chris, what's what's your line at the end of this? Well, thank you to everybody who's been listening to We Could Survive That, your weekly survival guide to the mad world. We're going to see you next week for anything in particular. Ooh, um, hmm. Better the dead. Don't tempt me with Bed of the Dead. Uh, Larmageddon? Uh, don't tempt me with Larmageddon either. Uh, <laughs> I'll think about it and I'll get back to you, Chris. Well, in that case, we're going to see everybody next week for a mystery movie currently. But until then, keep on surviving. And dear God, drive safely. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>